Hi, this is Suzanne Hamilton, real estate broker with RE Home Source. And today I have with me Ann uh, Hoha from Butler Law Center in Tinley Park. And today we're going to talk about why you should use an attorney in a real estate transaction. Uh, whether you're buying a house or selling a house, it's really important to use a real estate attorney. Uh, you're not required to by law, and that's the first thing a lot of clients ask me is, do I have to use an attorney? And I say, well, no, you don't have to use an attorney, but you should use an attorney. And here's why. And we're going to talk today about not only why you should use an attorney, but why it benefits you in every aspect of the transaction to use an attorney. Um, the first thing is, um, who's going to do all the paperwork for you? Uh, when you're at a closing, there is a mountain of paperwork that you have to fill out and, uh, and sign, and you're not going to understand it at all. So who's going to fill it out for you, right, Ann? Yeah. If I'm not there, nobody's going to fill it out for you. So um, a lot of the paperwork that comes into a closing, whether you're a buyer or seller, there's a significant amount of paperwork that needs to be filled out. I know the laws, so I know what needs to be there and what doesn't need to be there. Um, probably one of the biggest packets when you're a buyer is the mortgage paperwork, which can be confusing to some people, um, but it's not to me because I, you know, I practice real estate law. There are certain documents that repeat, so I always explain to buyers what's going on with that, what's happening there. As far as the seller side, there's a lot of documents that you need to prepare for the closing itself. So you have to make sure there's, you have all the correct paperwork and it's filled out properly. You have legal descriptions. There's a lot that really goes into it. It's not a simple process. Now, since we're in Illinois, we're going to be talking about Illinois law because laws differ from state to state. So in Illinois, Anne, can anybody else explain that paperwork to you at a closing? No. Legally? Legally, no. A closer cannot explain it to you. The buyer, Your agent, buyer's agent, or if the other party has an attorney, they're not allowed to explain that paperwork to you. It's not allowed in Illinois. Okay, great. So the other reason that I often tell people is when you're selling a property as a seller, there's a lot of paperwork to do. Gone are the days when you write something down on a piece of paper and say, here, I'll sell you my home and shake hands on it. That used to be the case uh, many decades ago, but it's not anymore. There's a lot of paperwork involved. Anything from surveys to tax transfer forms to titles, title searches, uh, all this stuff has to be done. If you're a seller and you don't know any of this, you're not going to be able to have the proper paperwork to ensure that the transaction is not only smooth but legal, right? Exactly. Yeah. I, that's part of my job. I go through the title search. The title company gives me the title search package. I go through it. I verify the history of the property, make sure everything's in there. I submit the search to the title company, and then they generate the title commitment from that. And what will show on there, if there are any liens on the property, any other issues that might be on there, if the name is a common name, there might be a judgment against them. All sorts of information comes into play there it, because it is very important as the seller to sell a property you have to clear any liens that are on title whether it be a mortgage or a pass due assessment or water anything so that all has to be cleared off but we need to know what's out there first and so that's something I take care of as the attorney I get those liens cleared prior to closing um, there's a lot of paperwork that gets filled out as Suzanne said there's a deed there's these tax forms that need to be filled out so it's it's definitely a lot of information Great, great. And that's, and that's right, because if you miss something mm -hmm. or if something's not correct, what can happen? Well, a lot can happen. <laughs> unfortunately, I, I've seen situations where a client came to me down the road, and unfortunately, the legal description that was entered on the deed they originally had was incorrect. So then it had to be backtracked through title. I had to contact a title company to do a title search, and it had to be backtracked, and then we had to re-record with the correct legal. So it can be an issue. So then that, was, that cost them more money. Than they need to spend in the first place. If they had an attorney who reviewed everything at the closing, including the legal description on the deed and all the other documents, they wouldn't have had to go back 10 years later and have a corrected deed re recorded. And because of all this paperwork, especially in Illinois, uh, most sellers do use attorneys. So if you're a buyer and you're not using an attorney or you don't want to use an attorney, uh, that could be a problem for you because the other side and we, we hate to put it into this side and that side, but the other side will have an attorney. And so what are you going to do if, if you don't? As the buyer, what does an attorney do throughout the process up until you get to closing? Oh, throughout the process? Oh, goodness. Okay, so what I do personally 
is as soon as I get the contract, I go on, if it's a Cook County property, I go on their tax portal. I go on the recorder's office because I'd like to see what I'm getting into. I'd like to be aware before I get a title commitment if there's any problems on the property. If there's a judgment against the seller, if they have any liens against the property, I want to know that well in advance so that I know kind of how to negotiate my contract if I have to write something into it. Um, well, yeah, and, and that's true. <laughs> that's true because, you know, and that's something that Ann does that nobody else does. But, you know, throughout the process of, of a home purchase, there are, there's the inspection. Mm -hmm. There's some negotiation involved in that. Now, can your agent do that? Yes, legally your agent can mm -hmm. absolutely do that. However, again, if there's another attorney on the other side, it becomes difficult because agents deal with agents, attorneys deal with attorneys, mm -hmm. okay? So it's really important to do that. But that's the one thing that I will say that Ann does that most attorneys, real estate attorneys I know don't do, is they actually review the liens before they get. A lot of them wait until the title company brings the, uh, what's called the Alta statement, and then they just look at the, the exceptions and things on that. So that's something that, that she definitely does do. Um, and, you know, another thing that I always tell people when they, they say, okay, I should use an attorney, um, you know what, there's a lot of attorneys. Uh, attorney is something like a doctor where there's a, you know, you're a doctor, you have a license, you're an attorney, okay? But in when we go to the medical field, we don't have a cardiologist do our brain surgery. And the same thing is true for attorneys. There's many different specializations. So why should you use a real estate attorney, Ann, as somebody who specializes and has experience in real estate? Because somebody who specializes in corporate law doesn't necessarily know real estate law. And I have been on the other side where the buyer had a family friend who was an attorney, and that family friend didn't practice real estate law, and he's asking me questions, and I said, I kind of can't answer a lot of those questions. You should know this, you know, at the very least. Um, so I do think it's an issue, you know, if you're cousin out there is a divorce attorney, they're not necessarily a real estate attorney. They're not necessarily going to give you what I give you, like I said, where I go ahead and I search the property tax issues, or I search the recorders to see what's out there. That's not something, I, a lot of real estate attorneys don't do it either, it's just something I do myself. But with an attorney who actually practices real estate law, they're going to see, they are going to foresee things that might happen when it comes to tax prorations, um, if you're getting a credit based on the repairs that need to be made. Or if the client, or if the buyers are sellers, excuse me, are going to make the repairs, we're going to get that in writing. So that's something we're going to focus on. I don't necessarily know an attorney that doesn't practice real estate law would think to do some of those things. Right, because there's a lot of different nuances mm -hmm. that they don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big proponent of saying you don't know what you don't know. Uh, not only does it apply in this case to a person who doesn't have that experience, it also applies to an attorney who doesn't have the experience in real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, you may trust them. Um, and that's important. However, the thing is, if they don't know what they're doing, they're as dangerous to you as you are, uh, and even worse, because you know that you don't know what you don't know. And I was going to say, to add to that, a big part of that, too, is one of the big things in your contract is your mortgage contingency date. There are certain dates that you have to meet. I put those in my calendar. A non-real estate attorney may not recognize that those are important, because if something comes out and you need to back out of the deal because you don't get the mortgage, you'll get your earnest money refunded to you. But if you blow that date and that other attorney, you know, didn't check with the lender to make sure that you were going to make that date or if you need to extend that date out, you will lose your earnest money. Absolutely. And, you know, there's, a, there's so many things, mm -hmm. uh, as we've talked about. There's guidelines. There's deadlines. There's different intricacies. And it all comes down to a couple of things. First of all, a real estate attorney can save you time, can save you hassle, and can definitely save you money in the short run and the long run. Um, if you don't have the proper representation, you're not going to know what things that you're entitled to. And if something goes wrong, and if it's something is wrong, not only are you not going to know what you're entitled to, it, you know, a year from now, you could have a lawsuit on your hands. And that's certainly going to cost you a lot more money. So let's talk about um, where you would find an attorney. Now, uh, we've decided that, yeah, attorney is a good idea. So the clients say to me, can you recommend somebody, a real estate attorney, somebody who has real estate experience? Now obviously, just like in any other job, there's good ones and there's bad ones. Uh, the attorneys that I never refer are the ones that I call the just see you at closing types. And the just see you at closing types think that the only thing they have to do is show up and sit across from you at a table and have you sign all the documents and explain them to you. While that's really important, it's not the whole service. Uh, just like anybody else that you hire, your attorney is there for you. So I would say 
talk to the people who deal with attorneys, real estate attorneys, all the time because they're going to know the good ones from the bad ones. Talk to your realtor. Talk to your lender. Talk to even sometimes the title company. Uh, and they can provide you with a good rep representation. Then you should talk to the person. Talk to them. Make sure that you feel a level of comfort. It's super important that you are comfortable asking questions because that's what they are there for. Right, Ann? Absolutely. Yes. I welcome any questions from my clients. If they call and, and apologize because maybe they've called me three times that day, I say, it's okay. I do this for a living. You don't. This is my job is to explain it to you, to make you un make sure you understand. I don't want you buying something and not having a clue what's happening. I like to walk my clients through the process as best I can and make them comfortable with it and have them be comfortable with me. Great. Uh, so the other question that people say is, what should I expect from this attorney? Once I've got somebody I like, I want to know what should I expect from them. You should expect that they're going to review all the paperwork, that they're going to do their due diligence, just like Ann said, looking at digging into the property a little bit and trying to get ahead of any problems. Uh, you should expect that they communicate with you. You should expect that they communicate with all the realtors, the lender, the title company, the other attorney. There's a lot of parties involved in this, and there's a lot of moving parts in a real estate transaction. So it's super important that you should expect and you should hold that attorney to that expectation. I agree. Absolutely. I mean, and that's part of my job. I'm in communication with my agents, with the lender, because I know what's happening, you know, when I'm the buyer's buyer's attorney. When I'm the seller's attorney, I'm in communication with the agents constantly. Usually an agent will give me the information from the lender. Lenders will usually talk to seller attorneys as well just to give us an update as to what's happening. So, you know, yeah, that's, that's part of the process. To me, it's what, I, it's what I should do, so it's what I do. And you know what else? I think it's really important, uh, like Ann says, Ann does communicate. And a lot of times what happens is the realtor usually builds a rapport with the person first. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're in the houses with them. We're talking about their needs. We're talking about their family. We're meeting their family, their kids, their parents, whatever. Uh, so we generally have that trust relationship. It's really important that an attorney feels like a partner in the team. Because if they feel like they're the only ones on the team and they're not keeping anybody else involved, uh, not talking to the other realtor, not talking to the um, client, that's a big problem. And so communication is something mm -hmm. that I would say is in the top three of what I would expect from a real estate attorney. Yeah, I, I personally communicate with my clients all the time. I want them, even if I'm sending a letter, we've talked about it, what's going to happen, they get a copy of the letter that I sent to the other attorney because I'm keeping them in the loop. They know what's happening, but I want to make sure they see it as well. And the loop, that's a really good analogy because if you've got a loop mm -hmm. or you've got a circle of people, mm -hmm. you need to make sure that the circle is complete because one break in the circle and there's going to be problems. Right. Um, so what should you pay for a real estate attorney? Uh, real estate attorneys, unlike other attorneys, do charge flat fees uh, for real estate transactions because it's a finite period of time and it's generally something that you kind of know what's going to happen, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so, absolutely. So a flat fee is expected. Right. Um, you're not on a retainer. You're not on a per hour. There's always a joke about about attorneys rather that you know uh, you're always going to pay by the hour right. or by the phone call or not by the real letter. Estate or flat fee. Right. <laughs> so it's a flat fee. So. You don't have to say what you charge, but mm -hmm. what is the range in the Chicagoland area that somebody should be able to expect? The range I see is anywhere between four fifty and six hundred. So that that's pretty much what I'm seeing out yeah. there. Yeah, that's so I would really agree. Four fifty is that. I would agree. Now every realtor can charge, or every attorney should charge exactly what they believe they should charge. Right. You know, and it's exactly. okay to shop around. The other thing is, it's okay to ask what they charge, mm -hmm. and it's okay to negotiate with them a little. Now, mm -hmm. of course, they can say no. Um, but, uh, you know, you can ask the fees, you can ask what the fee structure is and things like that. But again, it's a flat fee. Mm -hmm. Um, so the other thing that, that I usually would say is, you know, there's an old adage to say you get what you pay for. And, and another one that you could say is don't be penny wise and pound foolish. And that's certainly always relevant when you're dealing with a, a hiring a professional or an expert to do what you should, they should be doing. Um, sometimes you can save 500 bucks, okay, not using an attorney. But what's it going to cost you in the long run? Is it going to cost you a lawsuit, which is going to be 10 times that? Is it going to cost you uh, potentially the sale of the home, uh, which can cost you money as well and time and holds up your goals? Um, you know, as a buyer, you could miss out on the home of your dreams 
Not that there's not another home there, but you could miss out on the home or your dreams because of that. So ultimately, I think that it's not only your personal home, which is very important and very emotional. This is also the largest investment you will ever spend. So why not spend a few hundred dollars to make sure you're protected, to make sure you're educated, and to make sure you're informed. So use a real estate attorney. If you have any questions, you can reach me at 888-788-9544, Suzanne Hamilton, RE Home Source. And thank you, Ann Hoha, Butler Law Center. And uh, you can find her, you can find me at, at rehomesource.com, at rehomesource1 on Twitter. And you're at Butler Law. Law. Yeah, at Butler Law on Twitter.